trace of them. Dogs picked up nothing, huh? Nothing. That's a hot one. Two guys break out of jail in a truck in broad daylight and vanish in thin air. It must be the rain. Washed everything clean. Seems to me last year they put in a big new storm drain around here somewhere. Maybe they crawled up in it. That's an idea. Where is it? I don't know for sure. Come on, Jack. Let's take a look down at the ravine. Hold it, boys. Hold it. Let's find her on the map first. Come back later. Okay. My lady, have a nice trip. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That'll be one in that. Thank you very much. Next, please. 85 cents.
the ride, Harry. You've been awfully sweet to poor little me. Drop in again sometime. So long, please. Well, hello. What are you doing here? I, uh, I came in that bus. Got away without me. Well, that's too bad. There won't be another bus until tomorrow morning. Come on in the house. Maggie will fix you up for the night. It's only coffee, Maggie. There's nothing in it. You're the swiggingest man I ever seen. I can never give you a throat of rest. Hey, Maggie. Hey, Maggie. Oh, Aunt Maggie, it's so good to see you. Back again. Hmm? Mind your own business, Smitty. What am I going to do with you, Georgia? See, I give you a job and a nice home, and you don't appreciate it. You go tracing off every time the fancy strikes you. i never seen such a fool girl. Where have you been this time? Oh, Aunt Maggie, I've had such a terrible time. It's so wonderful to be back. You have no idea what I've been through. Hmm. Yes, I have. Those traveling salesmen ain't no steadier than those squirrels in the trees. But they travel around awful nice cars, don't they, Georgie? Smitty. But it won't happen again, Aunt Maggie. I hate them all. I hate them. I'll never look at another man. My own sister's child. Oh, ye winds of heaven come down and blow away the trash of the earth. Well, what are you standing there for? There's work to be done. I'm glad you're back, Georgie. Glad you're back. There's work to be done now. Go on, get the dishes out there. Come on, hurry. No comments from you, Smitty. Did I say anything? No, but you might. And you got no right to dirty up the air with your thoughts, not you. Well, where'd you come from? Just missed the bus. How come? Well, I went for a little walk to stretch my legs. When I got back, the bus was pulling out. That's right, Aunt Maggie. I saw him out there. Hmm. People wait for buses. Buses don't wait for people. That's the way things is. Yeah, but they took my bag with them. Well, they'll hold it for you in San Francisco. There's another bus coming by here tomorrow morning. Better take a cabin. Yeah, I suppose so. They're two dollars. Hardly pays for the linen or the trouble of making the beds. Here, sign book. Cabin number five. Okay. All right, Dan, easy yourself down for the night. I'm pleased to have you. I'm Maggie Dillon if you want anything. Okay. Good night, Dan. Good night. Pleasant rest to you. Well, you didn't pay me the two dollars. I'll get it. Hurry. Gotta get some sleep. Maggie says you forgot to pay her the two bucks for the cabin. I did, huh? Just thought I'd tell you so you could pay me now if you wanna. With what? Oh, left all your dough on the bus, I suppose. It's too bad. But it sounds phony to me, brother. You're hoping over, can't you? Well, what do you know? Thought you were a stranger around here. What's the pitch? That Gruber told me to come here. Gruber. You read the papers, don't you? Matt and I broke out together. He told me to tell you who I am. Now, he'll be here next Wednesday and pick the both of us up. Us? Yeah. He wants you to come along, too. What's your name? I'm John Coulter. This is Dan Parker. So Gruber will be here next Wednesday, huh? Yeah, that's what he said. Now, listen. I only got 20 cents. Will you stick me till he gets here? Maybe. You'll keep your mouth shut. Well, sure, sure. Okay. I gotta get some sleep. Catch you in the morning. I'll be around. Okay. Good night.
Aunt Maggie. Hello, Hope. Come in. Come in. What kind of a day did you have? Uh, I don't know. Wish I hadn't gone to town. What happened? Nothing. I brought you the things you wanted. Darning cotton. Slip. Couldn't get 44, so I got a 46 pink. Thank you, honey. What you so upset about? Me? I'm all right. I just wish I could find some place where I could go where there wouldn't be any radios and newspapers and people. There's a first-class cemetery over the hill. Very quiet. <laughs> I might even try that. Why don't you turn in early, dear, and get a good night's rest? I will. But I want to clean things up a little first. Oh, by the way, you will have a little help tomorrow. Georgie's back. No. Oh? That's nice. I hope she stays. Good night, Maggie. Good night, darling. Oh, George, I'm glad you're back. Hello, Angel. How's tricks? Let's try to keep this place clean from now on. What do you say, Georgie? When are you going to stop giving me that phony talk? All I said was let's keep the place clean. Is that an insult? I'll admit you had me kidded for a while. But I know what the score is now. What? What's gotten into you? Heard from your boyfriend lately? Or maybe you've been seeing him in town. Boyfriend? What do you mean? Matt Gruber. Or don't you read the paper? Matt Gruber. Uh-huh. They're all excited about him on the radio, too. He must be awfully nice. Real he-man. You know, I could go for someone like that myself. Maybe you'll introduce me. He'll be here Wednesday. Told you that. The gentleman in number five. Gruber's pal. And the funniest thing happened. He thought I was you. Spelt the whole thing to me. Boy, was that a joke. <laughs> You'll see him tomorrow. But from now on, Angel, you're going to do just what I say around here, or else. Georgie, listen to me. I don't know what you've heard, but I'm not Matt Gruber's girlfriend. I knew him, yes, but that was a long time ago. How did I know he was going to be sent to prison? We all make mistakes when we're that young, don't we? All right, all right. What do you want me to do? Just don't tell anybody about this, will you? I don't know what I'm going to do, but I've got to do it in my own way. It's my whole life, don't you see? Yeah, I see. I'll pay you back sometime, somehow. Only, I'll do anything for you. Only just tell anybody about this, please. It means so much to me. I'll think about it. You have to sign again. You did! You knocked it down again. Oh, Pachimu, Pachimu, why do I always do that? Once more and I'll have to buy a new one. Go tell it to Maggie. Maggie, Maggie. The Weezer, I might have known that. And Alice, ah. how many times have I told that in Berguenza? Look, $42.50. I can't afford it, not even in my own cab. The <laughs> Weezer, back so soon I thought you were fishing. We did. Up the mountains, down the mountains. Did you catch anything? Fish. Oh. <laughs> You're the up and goingest man I ever seen, Alex. But I'm glad to have you back for a spell. Right, good to be here. Uh,
I'm going to wake up the gentleman in cabin number five. With a broom? Never mind, never mind. Who is it? Alexander Alexandrovich De Chocot Shaw to you. And who? Shaw! S-H-A... Come on, open up. Maggie sent me. Good morning. Maggie said you got stuck here last night and the bus got away with your baggage, so I thought you might need a razor. Well, thanks. How about your cup of coffee, too? My wife makes terrible coffee, but it's hot. Are you hunter or fisherman? Huh? I don't get you. The whiskers, where did you grow it? On your vacation? Yeah, on my vacation. My wife and I are on our vacation, too. She is dancer, I'm taxi driver by profession. Oh, yeah. You're the guy that made all that racket last night when you drove in. Of course, uh, I'm really an actor. Actor? Yes, I come from a long line of artists in the old country. My mother was a talented painter, my father a marvelous actor in Siberia. I'm taking him to his footsteps. <clears throat> Do not be alarmed. It's still me, Alex Shaw, at your service. I'm rehearsing my new act. It is hilarious. I will show you. Mind if I go on shaving? No, 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 no. Go right ahead. You see, my wife is beautiful dancer. She's on stage. The music goes... That is called fanfare. I make my grand entrance and sweep the audience off the feet. Uh, do you notice anything peculiar about the broom? No, no. The handle is painted purple. <laughs> I see her. I admire her. I tip my hat. She ignores me. Could it be the beard I ask myself? Who knows I answer myself? So I change my personality. And again, it does not work. So I make a lightning change, and she sees me like this. She screams, ah! Alex. Come in. Alex, what are you doing? I'm showing him my act, and he loves it. Well, Louisa wants you to help her with the dishes. Dishes, dishes. I'm a nice patient. No, not now. Inspiration does not wait. A bird in the hand, that sort of thing. Come on. Come Alex. On. Now, stand over there. So, put the arm up. Grace. So, Grace. Can't you look just a little bit happy? No, not today, Alec. You know you are absolutely hopeless. Beautiful. But morbid. Think of something nice. Birds in the trees. Love. Me. <laughs> a funny girl. One moment she's sad, next moment she's happy. But she moved. Wow. Think that you still, huh? But of course, I have to show my ignorance somehow. You make any money doing that? Money? What is that? No, he paints because he likes it. The lady behind me is Louisa, my wife. Hello. Hi. Now, uh, you stand over by her, too. And put your arm around her. You know, like uh, lovebirds. Thanks, but I don't want to be in your picture. Oh, you'll never recognize yourself, I promise you. Let's just forget it. Thanks for the razor, eh? Left it on the chair. I'll tell you what, Alec. Let's finish this later when I've got more time. Every time I have a terrific creative mood, always something happens. Chum! <laughs> yeah? Hello. Who's that screwball out there? That's Alex Shaw. Comes through here every year on his vacation. Those two cops that came here. What do they want? That's Mac and Jerry. They're stopping here twice a day on their patrol. Get work here? Yeah. I'm Hope Novak. Novak? 
wait a minute. I met a girl here last night. She said she was Hope Novak. A blonde, you know, kind of. You mean Georgie. Yeah, she told me all about you and all the things you said. So I thought I'd better tell you now so you wouldn't go on making the same mistake. Maybe someday I'll learn to keep my mouth shut. How did I know? She looks more like Matt's kind of a girl than you do. That's supposed to be a compliment, thanks. No, I... You just don't look it, that's all. It's me, all right. I heard the news broadcast this morning. They're looking all over for you in San Francisco. The ticket grouper? I don't think so. Said you killed a guard when you escaped from prison. I didn't, I didn't. I swear I didn't. I didn't want to break out. I was a trustee. I only had a year to go. Gruber shoved a gun in my ribs, jumped in my truck. He made me drive him out. I had no choice. You don't believe me, do you? I don't know. I guess I believe you. If you wait here for Gruber, you know what will happen to you eventually. Yeah. I guess I'm through any way you're looking. It was a miracle. Happens. Miracle? That's what the both of us are looking for. Look, why don't you give yourself up to the two cops you saw last night? Tell them the truth. The truth never killed anybody. They'll give you a break. I know they will. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't get breaks from guys like that. But don't worry, I'm gonna drag you into this. I'll get out today. You got any money? Twenty cents. Here's three dollars. That's all I've got with me, but I'll get you more later. No, thanks. Go on, take it. Thanks. What about that other girl, that blonde? You suppose you'll keep her mouth shut for a little while and I get out of here? I'll talk to her. Thanks. You better come on over and have some breakfast. Come on. Well, look who's here. What do you have, Danny? Never mind, I'll take care of it. Ham and eggs all right? Yeah. Ham and eggs, Smitty. Coming up. Stop your smoking. Oh, there you are. Listen, young man, do you think I'm in business for my health? Georgie says you haven't got enough money to pay for your cabin. Oh. Oh, I guess I was a little punchy last night. Here's your two bucks. Well, here I thought she was going to promise to send it to me or something. Not that I mind. Yeah. I don't want to take it. If that's all you've got. You can send it to me if you want to. I'll get along. Give him a piece of apple pie on the house. Homemade, son. Made it myself. There they go again. I have to fill gas tanks and do everything else around here. Wait a minute. I can fill a gas tank if that's all you want. You will? Well, go ahead. Or is it the San Francisco? San Francisco? About 100 miles, I guess. Well, you better fill her up. Here's a 20. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, I guess so. Nice looking job. Everything all right? I, uh, that'll be 240. I haven't got change for 20. I don't think I got it. Wait a minute. Yeah. Just made it. What body?
240, a little over 10 gallon. Come on up here. What do you want? Don't you want your ham and eggs? No, it's all right. I, I'm not hungry. Oh, nonsense. Come on in. Well? Well, what you standing there for? Come on, sit down. I was just telling Jerry and Mac here about you. The ham and eggs, please. Okay. Aren't you the fellow that was in that snappy convertible? Thought you were taken off. No, I, uh, I was just servicing him. It was like I was telling you. Uh, the bus went off and left him here last evening. Thought maybe you and Jerry could help him locate his luggage. Might be down at the junction. Sure, we could do that. No, no, it's all right. I'll telephone a friend of mine to pick it up for me. Mm, suit yourself. If you have any trouble, let us know. Yeah, thanks. Where do you come from, bud? Me? Boy, uh, uh, he's a Chicago boy. Oh, in Chicago, huh? What are you going to do out here? Oh, I don't know. I thought maybe I'd get a job. What's your racket? Pick up a little money fighting on it. Oh, a fighter, huh? What do you call yourself? Dan Barker. You can take care of cars, too, can't you? Yeah, I do that when I'm not fighting. Well, you ain't fighting now. My years is too many for that kind of work. And as long as you're here, you might as well be doing it to, for your keep, of course. That part's okay. But I ain't gonna be here very long. Until uh, Wednesday, maybe? Maybe. Okay, I'll get it for you. You catch on quick, don't you? Hey, put some air in my tires while you're out there, will you, bud? Sure. Good deal, Maggie. Good deal. Thanks for the pie. Catch you tonight. See you this evening, boys. You know, Jerry, I've seen that guy's face before somewhere. Oh, he said he was a fighter. Oh, come on, girls. Get the counter cleared up. Okay. Smitty, keep this warm for me, will you, please? Okay, Hope. Georgie, do you have to talk so much? I didn't say a word. Why don't you leave him alone? Am I going to have trouble with you? What if you keep your mouth shut? I could have spelled the whole thing to Jerry and Mac. I was thinking about it. It seemed like a good idea. But you know something, Hope? He's not bad looking, is he? Cut it out, Georgie. What are you going to do? Wait for Matt Gruber to come shoot up the joint? I don't know. Maybe you've got something. It's exciting, isn't it? Almost like having a wild animal for a pet. You make me sick. Go ahead, clean off that counter, Hope, and take those dishes out. And don't bother me. I'm busy. Tonight to catch the bus in the morning. Thanks, but I won't need it. But you got heat. I'm staying here. If I take to the road now, they'll catch up with me. You see, I found something out this morning. Those two cops that came here, they don't know who I am. They weren't looking for me at all. They won't be surprised if they see me around here. This is the safest place I can be, don't you see? It may be all right for you, but not for me. Now, look, just don't be here when Matt comes, that's all. I'll get him out of your way. We'll head for the border and you'll never see us again. Then you can come back and nobody will know the difference. When Matt comes, I'll have to turn him over to the police. If you're caught with him, it'll be just too bad. <laughs> it's five dollars. That's all you're going to get. Oh, Maggie, I got important business to do in town. Sure, I need a suit, need some new shirts. I know all about your important business. It comes in bottles. You've given up your whole life to it and scorned to pray. Maggie, I give you my word. I ain't gonna touch a drop. Not a drop. It's a scandal. The minute I saw you with that bow tie on, I knew it was Saturday night and you were going out to fill up on sweet wine like you always do. Maggie, no more, no. It's been a terrible fight, but I got a lick now. Gee, you don't see me drinking anymore around here, do you? 
Well, you've stopped drinking my lemon extract. I'll give you credit for that. But I don't trust you on Saturday nights. Maggie, I promise. No, I'm holding out the rest of your pay till you straighten up. But I gotta get away once in a while, talk to somebody. Somebody will treat me like a man, because I am a man. I fought on ships that sailed all the oceans of the world. I've been in two wars. I've heard all that before. But let's have the other five. I needed to buy a present for Hope. And that's another thing. What does an old soap like you always want to be buying presents for a young girl like Hope for? She doesn't understand it either. What for? Well, I'll tell you, Maggie. I was a family man once. Had a wife and a little girl. She'd be about Hope's age now. Ever hear the guy who went to the corner to buy a pack of cigarettes and never come back? Me. She liked to quarrel, I didn't, and I walked out on her. And I went to sea. And I've been sorry for it ever since. So, now whenever I see a girl like Hope, I kind of reminded of that, and I like to buy her present. Because I, I kind of pretend that she's my own little girl. You don't mind, do you? All right. All right, but it's a waste of money. Thank you. Don't you buy her any more kittens or goldfish, because I have to take care of them. I won't, I won't forget. upon this music. Look, my friend, I'm only trying to tell you that a million bucks in the bank wouldn't make the music sound any different than it does right here under these trees for a bunch of people like us who haven't got a dime. Get it? A million bucks is pretty sweet music. I still take drugs. to talk to you since last evening. What about? Are you and Matt? Quiet. Might have some good ideas, you know. Forget it. I like dangerous people. You don't have to be afraid of me. Mr. Leader, I'm the greatest taxi driver in America. But you said you were an actor. I am still the greatest taxi driver in America. He paints pictures, too. Oh, that is just something I have to get off my chest, like, like some guy cannot pass a bar room. What does it get you? I don't know. I've painted over 700 of these things. They aren't good, but I like them. And one of these days, I'm going to hire a hall, hang them up on the walls, then Louisa and I are going to get a dressed up and walk around and look them all over, all by ourselves. That is what you call a one-man show, real class. Everybody in this world got the right to say a little something, and that is my way. Everybody's part jackass, huh? Oh, forget it, Alec. I'm just trying to explain something to my impetuous young friend. Baloney. Okay, then. Nothing personal. You tell him, hope that I just like to shoot off my mouth. Maybe you two will get on better. You're getting a good start. Got any hot numbers? Don't let it keep you awake.
go for all this cockeyed stuff, not me. Music, millionaires, painting pictures. Schumansky. How do you get that way? You're just a taxi driver, chump, and you don't own nothing any more than I do. I think I'll ask her and Maggie to put in a jukebox. But she won't. Well, go ahead. Say it. Say what? I can't help it if I blew up. Your friend got my goat. He's nuts. Forget it. You've been out of touch with things too long. You don't know how to treat people anymore. That's all right. You'll get over it, maybe. You know, the trouble with you is you haven't any friends. So what? They're hard to find. I know that. It took me a long time, too. I think Alec and Louisa like you. Why should they? Well, they asked you over, didn't they? They're pretty nice people. They mind their own business. Always ready to do something for you. They never ask any thanks. That's worth something, isn't it? Maybe. I wanted you to go over there tonight so I could show you some of the things that make me like this place. If I thought I had to go back and live the way I used to. Being nice to people I didn't like. Not trusting anybody. Hating things. I think I'd go out and shoot myself. You're beginning to talk like Alec. You'd think he owned everything. Those stars up there, they belong to everybody you know. Never think about it. You know something? I think you're nuts, too. <laughs> Maybe I am. That star up there, you mean that belongs to me? It belongs to you as much as anybody. There's nothing you can do about that. Okay, I'll split it with you. Thanks. The next time I find myself without any dough, I'll just hand him a piece of my star. Tell him to keep the change, you're catching on. Yeah. Take it easy, Johnny. Stop trying to fight everybody. You'll be better off. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Hi, Johnny. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean Dan. Hi. You're up early, aren't you? Yeah. I waited around for you last night. You did, huh? Uh-huh. Thought maybe you might want to talk to me. What about? Well, you know, those things you were telling me when you first came. Forget it. I bet you could be awfully nice to me if you wanted to be. I've never met anyone like you. I think it's wonderful. And you've got such strong hands. Did he come back yet? Not yet. Hello, Bright Eye. You're just in time to cook us some eggs. He's making an awful mess of it here. You better get some clothes on, Georgie. The bus will be here. And with Smitty not here, you'll really have to pitch in. You can handle the bus crowd, can't you? Where's Maggie? She's in church. You know it's Sunday. Can I give you a hand? All right. Oh, here's the guy that can do that. How about fixing us some bacon and eggs, Smitty? Thank you. This is for you. Thanks, Smitty. <laughs> boy, oh boy, I'll bet he feels pretty. <laughs> we never know if Smitty's coming back or not till he gets here. He'll be fine with a few hours sleep. This makes six of the silly fish. The best way to live in this joint is to stay unconscious. See you later, handsome. You go get on some decent clothes, you hear me? And stop that infernal smoking. That girl will be the death of me yet. Bless my soul and body. What a pretty day for churching. The preacher tossing words around like a far-off storm and the birds singing. Goldfish? Smitty, is he back? Poor soul, he does the best he can, but someday he may make it. Maybe. Well, I'll go change and put on my working clothes. Look here, young man. If you must defile the Sabbath by reading the newspapers, wait till I'm through with it. What's the matter? Did you see the papers? 
killed a cop. A cop. Johnny, there's one thing to be thankful for. What with Matt when he did that. Yeah. Johnny, you've got to give yourself up before Matt gets here. He'll get him. He'll get you too. Yeah, I know. But you know why I haven't done it? Why? Well, it's because I... Go ahead, tell me. I don't know how to say it. Try. Well, this sounds silly. But I guess it's because you, you gave me a new slant on things. It's the first time in my life anybody ever gave a hoot for me. Alec, his wife, Maggie, and you. I hate to let go of it. I know what you mean. You do? Sure. I come from the same kind of place you do. You know, I was wondering about that. When Matt told me about you, I... I had an idea what she'd be like. Then I met Georgie. That was it. That's why I made my mistake and spilled to her. But you... I can't figure it. That's easy. It happens to lots of girls. I had to go to work when I was just a kid to help take care of my mother. My father died when I was about four. I made a little money dancing in floor shows. That's how I met Matt. He took a liking to me. He bought me presents. When I was still just a kid. I thought he was rich and wonderful. One day they came and took him away. They came to my mother's house and took me away too. For weeks I sat in a jail and in courtrooms. He told me that I was an accomplice. I carried a gun for Matt. He had my pictures in all the papers. He sent Matt to prison and let me go. Everywhere I went, people recognized me. Detectives watched me. My mother died at God, I think. And after that, well, I... When I came out here where nobody knew me, and I've been happy here till now. Well, that's about all. I feel about you, can I? I'll get out of here, that's what I'll do. You'll never see me again, forget it. What good will that do? I'm the kind of a guy you've been trying to get away from. I'm not gonna let you get mixed up in this, do you hear? Yes, I hear. the cash. Are you kidding? What do you want me to do, draw pictures for you? Where's the cash? Now listen, take it from a guy who's been on your end of this deal. This joint ain't worth a stick up, believe me. Now if you'll go down the road about five miles, you'll see the Peach Blossom Cafe. That's a good spot. Now I'm just figuring out it myself. I want that smile off your face. Where's the cash? They keep it in the lunchroom. All right, get going. It's in there. Bring it to me. And don't get any ideas. I'll be waiting right here. you're doing? Take it easy, there's a stick up. He's on the porch, he's got a gun on me. Yeah. Professional courtesy, huh? Stay right here. Don't move. And shut up! Stung him all right. Nice going, kid. What did he look like? I don't know. He was about six feet, I guess. Dark. About six feet. Dark. What make car? I didn't notice. Well, sedan, coupe. Sedan. I think it was dark blue. Dark blue sedan. Did you get a look at the license? Yeah, I got a flash of it when he drove off. I think it was uh, 88 N9. 
don't remember the rest of it, but it was 88N9 something. Well, that's good enough. License 88N series. Last number begins with 9, heading for Peach Blossom. Right, that is all. Okay, kid, thanks a lot. Let's go, Jerry. Just trying to think where I've seen you before. Never mind, I'll think of it. Save us a piece of that pie, Maggie. You'll be waiting, Mac. So long. Everybody's talking about you over at the house. Got a cigarette? Hey, you are, huh? Well, you can just go on back and tell them to forget it. I didn't have anything to do with that thing tonight, if that's what they're thinking. Oh, but you were wonderful. I loved it. Is Matt anything like you? Ah, uh, cut it out, will you? You know something? I bet we'd do all right together in San Francisco or some other big town. I'll bet. Sure. We'd get along okay. Got a little dough, too. Mostly 20s. But you don't have to stay here and wait for Matt, do you? Maybe I can get you out of this duck. What's the catch? What do you mean? Don't you trust me? What are you offering me doing for? Where'd you get it? Not that it's any of my business. I've been saving it. I knew I'd meet my kind of guy one of these days. We could catch the bus in the morning. Ah, uh, quit it, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You would. It's all right, Hope. She just came over to tell me that everything's okay up front and that Maggie isn't scared anymore. I came over to tell you the same thing. Oh, and Alex isn't worried. He wants you to come over and have some... Oh, I don't remember what the name of it was, but... Anyway, he wants you to come over and taste some of Louise's Spanish cooking. Yeah, sure. Thanks for coming over. Make yourself at home. I'll see you in the morning. About bus time. You've never seen anything like that water at night out in the coral sea. Green fire shot full of shooting stars. Well, I was riding a Liberty ship in a big convoy. We were doing about 12 knots. Hatches all battened down. Smoking lamp was out. And all of a sudden, wham, it hits us. And the next thing I know, I'm out in that water, and believe it or not, floating right beside me, it is a birthday cake I just baked for the skipper, candles and all. <laughs> you were in the service, weren't you? Yeah, sure. Marina, betcha. I always tell a Marine when I see one. You've done all right for yourself, Smitty. Danny. Oh, shut up. Well, I had four years of it, merchant Marine. It wouldn't take me in the regular Navy. Excuse me, Smitty. They said I was too old. Well, how about it? Aren't you coming? Where? Stupid. The bus will be here in ten minutes. Don't you remember what I said last evening? Get your stuff and meet me out in front. Sure you want to do this? There might be trouble. No trouble at all. Two hours we'll be in San Francisco. Tomorrow we'll be in San Diego. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, well, come on. Hurry up.
I've been looking all over for you. Cops again. Yeah, I saw him. They brought back the money from the stick-up last night. They got the two guys that did it, too. They did, huh? Well, can you imagine that? Me sending a couple of guys up to where I came from. They're in the Santa Maria jail now. Jerry and Mac wanted you to come down and identify them tomorrow. Well, not me. They'll get me down there and ask me a lot of questions. They'll find out who I am. You heard what that cop said this morning about remembering my face. Are they still there? Yeah, they've gone. Then I got a chance. I'll bum a ride to San Francisco or catch a bus. I gotta get out of here before tomorrow. Can you let me know before you leave? Why? Well, I thought maybe you might like to say goodbye before you go. No. Maybe it's better if I don't. You see, if the cops ever ask you about me, you won't know anything. Be back sometime, won't you? I don't know. Maybe. All right. That's the way you want it. That's the way it's got to be. Smitty, this is the most beautiful cake I've ever seen. It sure is. Gosh, I don't know how old she is. Do you think seven will be enough? Seven's a plenty. Now listen, after we go in with the cake, you bring in the silverware and the tablecloth, and we'll set the table up in a room. Where is Maggie? In a room, I think. Oh, listen, Johnny, will you keep her there if you can? We're planning a big surprise. Okay. Smitty, you better hurry up and get cleaned up now. I'll take care of the bed. Well, a fine thing. No, what's the matter? You left me standing out there in the middle of the road like a fool. Never came near me all day. How do you get that way? Now listen, George, I couldn't make it. Those cops came, remember? They brought Maggie's money back. They were looking for me. Why don't you make up your mind what you want to do? I will. Just give me a little time. Is that you, Dan? Come in here. Well, I'm getting out of here, with or without you. Talk to you later. Down in that valley, that so low, hang your head over, hear that wind blow. If you don't love me, love whom you please, but throw your arms around me, give my heart. Showing that to your friends or cops? No, I haven't. I've been watching you since you came here. I knew you was hurt somewhere. But I wasn't sure of you till you handled that holdup last night the way you did. I got my money back and I thank you for it. And I figure for a man like you to do that, there must be some good in you worth reaching for. And I'm reaching for it. Don't worry, Maggie. I'm gonna get out. I'm gonna get out first thing in the morning. Oh, you've... You've done a foolish thing, son. Breaking out of jail the way you did. With only a year to go. I've been reading about it. I couldn't help it. But you can go back and serve out your time and come out clean, can't you? It's not as easy as that. But you've been swell to me. You and Hope. I learned a lot of things I didn't know before since I've been here. But there's nothing I can do about it. Nothing. I've been watching you and Hope. She's a fine girl. She likes you, too. It's no good, Maggie. Do me a favor, will you? Take care of her. Maybe someday I can come back. Maybe not. All right. But there'll be lean hours walking up the sky for you, son. But I'll be thinking of you kindly. Okay, Ma. Son. Well, 
Oh, she's a jolly good fellow. She's a jolly good fellow. She's a jolly good fellow. And everyone loves Maggie. Happy birthday, darling. Happy birthday, darling. Happy birthday, darling. A double Happy celebration, birthday, Maggie. A double celebration. Your birthday. And we're leaving in the morning. Oh, so soon. Well, I have to go back to work to eat, and if I don't eat, I can go back to work. <laughs> Everybody over to the table. We have to blow out the candles. And I made a big mess of fried chicken with all the trimmings just for us. Oh, I, I'm obliged to you all. I'm glad I was born. Back in Tennessee, where I come from, well. We sing what the heart feels, and there's a song choking in my throat. Well, Magita, sing it. <laughs> if I was your true love, and you was my bow, I'd go to some city, tell the whole wide world so. But I ain't your true love, and you ain't my bow. So I'll go to some waterfall, hang my head low. Hang my head low, dear, hang my head low. And listen to the little birds as the airs come and go. And then is there anything we can do about this? With his head yeah, there on is. One side, anything you say? Twitter to his little mate. And my Let's get out of here tonight. Right. We can pick up a ride to the junction and catch a bus. Oh, what what will will I do, Gas station. When I, I shed all my tears. What will I do in those long, dreary years? For springtime will pass, dear, and summer will... You set the table. I want to go out and help Smitty. And white dead winter will know I loved you. It's so sad, I can taste it. But I love it, I love it.
sorry, mister. The place is closed. What's the celebration? That's uh, a birthday party. Hey, that's for the party. Did I ask you? Mister, I told you the place was closed. Who didn't know? Who wants to know? Don't give me that. Who's in there? Maggie and a couple of friends. Is there a young guy around here with a busted arm? Look, mister, I don't want any trouble with you. He's around here, I said. He's out there in one of them cabins. Get him. Leave it here. Smitty! There's a guy who wants to see you in the lunchroom. What do you look like? He's a big, ugly guy with a scar on his cheek. Little toffee slap me in the face. Now listen. Has anybody got a gun around here? I am. What? Is there going to be trouble? Yeah, I think so. Do you want me to get it for you? No, never mind. You stay out of this. I'll try to handle it. Okay. Francisco, she would. What happened? I don't know. Where'd she go? How should I know? You wouldn't kid me, would you, pal? Why should I? Sorry to miss on her. Yeah, come on. Let's get out of here. Well, you better get some grub out of the kitchen. Might need it. Well, how do you like that? You all right, baby? Oh, yeah. I've been waiting a long time to find you. Come on. Get your stuff and put it in that car out there. We're getting out. Wait a minute, Matt. Leave her out of this. I'll talk to you in a minute, pal. There's something you gotta know, Matt. You keep out of this. Don't pay any attention to him, Matt. He doesn't know what he's talking about. We don't want to take him along with us, do we? Why don't we leave him here? Not a bad idea. Go on, get your stuff like I said. He ain't going with you, Matt. Says who? I say so. You can take me along if you want to, but you're not going to drag her into this. She's had enough. Uh. Operator. Operator. Get away from that. Don't move, nobody. First one that comes off that porch, I'll kill. In the car, baby. 
Been dry. Stuck. Stuck in more. in the ambulance. Oh, poor Smitty. The spirit was willing, but the flesh was weak. But he was a man. Have you been looking over some of his things? Yes, I have. Anything I can do to help? No, not right now. Sometime I may tell you some things about Smitty's life. It's all right, Maggie. Your boy did a fine job. He came in last night bringing Gruber with him. Maggie. Bless my soul. Yes, we had a little trouble keeping Gruber alive so we can hang him. He's in the hot now, but we got a confession out of him. You're going back? Yeah. They talked to the warden and told him I had nothing to do with killing that guy. So I only got a year to go. A year? That's nothing. Nothing at all. Just a snap of the fingers. Yeah, just a snap of the fingers. I'm back. Yeah, I'll be back. Did I ever tell you two boys what I'm going to do to this place? I'm going to build three more cabins off there. I'm going to fix this place up real nice. And it'll all be ready in about a year's time. Yeah, I hear that. Do you want to kiss me? Okay, fella. Better get going. So long. So long. Goodbye, Mom. Thanks for everything. Goodbye, son. Save us a piece of that apple pie, Maggie. No, will, Mac. I'll be waiting. Come on, honey. 